Vamos a, a presentar entonces al, al primer ponente, a, a Zoltán Statusek. Primero lo haré en, en castellano, luego en inglés. Es el director de Relaciones Internacionales y Proyectos Europeos del Archivo Nacional de Hungría. Estudió Historia y Filosofía en Debrecen y también realizó un, un, un máster en Historia en la Universidad. En el campo de los archivos, su especialización son los documentos electrónicos, la digitalización y la, la implementación de proyectos. Es un, un miembro muy activo de diferentes grupos profesionales, especialmente de la Unión Europea. Eh, es director del DLM Forum, de, también es miembro del, del Governing Board de, de la Fundación del Portal Europeo de Archivos y también miembro de, del grupo de expertos de, de, en archivos de la Comisión Europea. Entonces le daremos la palabra y hará su intervención en inglés. Nos va a eh, contar eh, la, la, cómo se elaboró el mapa interactivo con, con el itinerario de los viajes de, de Carlos V. Ahora, en eh, inglés, eh, I'm, I'm going to, to introduce yourself, eh, eh, Sultan. Sultan is a, a senior archi archivist of the National Archives of Hungary. Uh, he is the director of uh, International Relations and EU Project Department. Uh, he studied history and philosophy in the Britain and holds a, a master in history uh, of the same university. In the archives, uh, his professional fields are electronic records Uh, digitalization and with extensive experience in large uh, scale implementation projects. He's an active member of several professional working groups and committees. Uh, for example, he represents uh, the National Archives of Hungary in the DLM Forum. Uh, he's member of the governing board of uh, Archives Portal Europe for Foundation and expert of the European Commission's European Archives Group. So, uh, Sultan, I, I, I'm going to give you the floor and Sultan is going to, to explain uh, an interactive uh, digital maps of the kings, queens and holy Roman and emperor. And he's, he's going to show us in, in live this uh, interactive map. So please, Sultan. Thank you, Christina. Thank you for this introduction and also for Severiano for his kind words about me and our cooperation among our, between our archives. So, uh, what I would like to... Okay, uh, the first thing what I would like to do, I uh, really apologize not bearing your language, um, but uh, I really hope that uh, this presentation will be self-explanatory enough uh, and I don't want to talk too much, uh, but uh, show you the application instead. But uh, first of all, I would like, I, I think I owe a kind of explanation why I'm here. Uh, so first of all, I think the, the uh, history of the two countries are uh, interconnected in several ways. Uh, when we are speaking about uh, uh, Carlos I, you must know that uh, 500 years ago uh, he was crowned as a Holy Roman Empire, but three years after in Hungary uh, was a decisive battle against the Turkish and uh, the Hungarian army was destroyed. And uh, shortly after that, uh, Carlos' uh, younger brother was elected as a Hungarian king. And since then, since the 16th century, the uh, his successors, successors ruled the Hungarian kingdom. Um, on the other hand, we have, as Severiano mentioned, we have a lot of collaborative projects, and this uh, Carlos Itinerarium is only one of them. So we are working to together in a large-scale European project, uh, trying to be accessible, the digital heritage of uh, the uh, European archives, held in the Euro European archives, uh, we also have uh, cooperations in uh, handwritten text recognition, 
and uh, working on uh, publication in uh, about publications uh, of uh, uh, documents, uh, heritage, archival materials of persons uh, with uh, uh, related to the history of both countries, just like uh, Kati Orna, the famous uh, photographer who was born in uh, Hungary and then uh, participated in the civil war and finally died in Mexico. So this is the reason why what I'm here. And uh, during this cooperation, uh, we two years ago uh, uh, visited uh, the Simancas archives when uh, 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 Julia and Joaquin uh, were so kind to uh, host us. And then beside the uh, friendly conversations, we uh, mainly about this common heritage and common history, uh, we came up with the, with the project what we had finished uh, a couple of months ago then. That project was focused on a famous Hungarian king, uh, King Matthias, uh, who was one of the most, most important kings of the Hungarian history um, in the uh, 15th century. He was a legendary king um, and a lot of uh, popular folk tales uh, were related to uh, his rule. According to the legends, he, uh, he was wandering the country uh, in uh, uh, disguise, uh, helping the poor uh, uh, punish the rich. So uh, we had a, a, a similar commemoration two years ago. And uh, 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 as part of this program, as commemorative program, uh, one of the historians who worked in the records, worked with the records of this uh, Hungarian king, came up with the idea to make a data visualization and put the travels into a map. So this map was, we showed uh, the uh, Spanish colleagues two years ago, and then uh, Joaquin drew my attention uh, to uh, the work of uh, Manuel de Foronda, who uh, published the travels of uh, uh, Carlos I. So then we decided that uh, we tried to do something uh, similar and uh, probably extend uh, and, and uh, uh, try to extend the, the, the service of uh, this itinerarium with the travels of uh, uh, Carlos. So now I uh, switch my screen and uh, I show you this application. Please confirm that you, you can see it. Okay. Yes. Okay. So what you can see now is the uh, opening screen and uh, uh, after this, the, this uh, two years work, we have now nine different kings, queens, emperors, included uh, Charles the first. The uh, first and, and uh, one of the most important feature of this, uh, of this uh, application is that it thrilling well. So uh, of course the original application, we started to do it in Hungarian, but uh, thanks to the collaboration and with the help of the Spanish colleagues, we translated the user interface. And now, uh, for your sake, uh, I switched it to uh, Spanish. So uh, the first important uh, thing is, so the, the, the next one is the uh, King menu uh, from which you can select uh, the, uh, the people who are uh, represented on the screen and uh, the, the persons who are related uh, uh, closer are represented in a similar color. So for example, John Hunyadi was the father of the King Matthias, what I uh, was uh, speaking about. Uh, Beatrice de Aragon was uh, the wife of the king. And uh, uh, you can find, uh, find also uh, Carlos uh, the first and the last one is Joseph II, who was also a Holy Roman Empire uh, 
uh, ruled uh, the uh, uh, the empire from uh, 1780 to 1790. But I think the, uh, for this uh, conferencia, uh, the uh, most important one is Carlos I. So I switch the map to his travels. Uh, you can with the with the button or with the mouse zoom out and in. And uh, you can see each dot, each dot represent one uh, place, and the bigger dots represent more uh, travels in the same place. So if you can see a big one, you can see uh, more uh, travels there. Uh, and the arrows represent the, the, the travels. You can switch the arrows on and off. Probably with switching off the arrows, it's, it's, it can be more visible, the uh, individual dots. So the, uh, the size of the dots represents the frequency of the, uh, of the travels in that specific location. The color of the dots uh, follows the uh, the timeline, so you can see uh, in the in um, in the bottom there is a timeline uh, which works as a filter. You can filter uh, the the travels into a specific time period. Uh, for example, if you want to see the the, the first part, uh, if I'm not uh, mistake, uh, uh, until uh, 1550. Uh, Carlos was uh, so was only in Flandria, and if you filter uh, that time peri period, you can see uh, you can see uh, that he was only really in, in in Flandria. You can zoom in, move the map accordingly, And you can see the uh, the individual places. If you click on one uh, specific place, and you are smart enough to to find the dot exactly. Oops. Hey, it must work. I'm not good enough in this. Oops. Hey, okay. Then uh, the details of that specific trip is uh, coming up on the screen. Okay. Uh, I reset the the map to the starting position. There is, uh, there is an also important feature because uh, uh, I think all the users want to start with uh, searching for a location. So in this, with this menu here, with, with this um, entry box, search box here, you can search for the places. Let's make a search from Saragoza, and you can see uh, the place. Oops. And clicking on the, the place, you can see all the travels what Carlos made in Saragoza. Clicking on one uh, specific trip, you can see the details which extracted from the Foronda book. You can see the, the time from June 21 uh, to October the 5th, uh, he traveled, uh, he, he stayed in Saragoza. And from the Foronda book, you can see uh, all the details uh, for each day or each time period and what he did in Saragoza. Uh, the important thing of this application is 
that we would like to use the role of the archives in, in uh, being the authentic place of the facts. Uh, in, the, uh, in our age, it's a very important function that uh, archives provide authentic information about, uh, about the history. So we want to uh, connect all the data what we publish to the records, to the original records. And you can see the references, the references of the original records in gray and in yellow, in, in this orange uh, uh, color, if there is a link to an online document. And you can find many, uh, you can uh, find links uh, to original uh, uh, documents in more than 2,000 uh, uh, cases for 18 different collections. So for example, this record is held, this book is held in the National Library of Spain. And this book contains the information what uh, uh, the specific uh, uh, travel or that specific date uh, in the, the uh, emperor travel in Zaragoza. And you can see that there are several, this record is from a different place, a different collection from the collection of uh, Archivo General de Indias. And it's connected to the catalog of the uh, Spanish State Archives, the Para Service. Uh, this service uh, has a lot of nice features, and but my favorite is uh, the animation, animation of these travels. So uh, because we uh, celebrate the uh, coronation of uh, Carlos as an emperor, which was happened in uh, 1520, I show you the travels uh, of the king uh, of 1520. I start the animation with this uh, start button. Hey, do it. Oh, yes. My mistake was that this filter was uh, in it, so I have to uh, remove the filter. And then I start the travels, and you can see that He started in Barcelona, and as the animation is going, uh, the map shows the travels one by one, and you can follow the footstep of the king in an animated uh, service. So you can see that in uh, 1520, the king uh, uh, crossed the peninsula, the north part, of uh, Spain, and uh, if you if you want, you can stop it. Check the given place. It was in Alagon. There is the description of that. You can close it, and you can continue it. And uh, because we, I think, don't have enough time to follow the whole trips of uh, Carlos during his lifetime. I try to be a bit faster, clicking on the forward button. And you can see that he crossed the country, the northern part of the country in uh, uh, 1520. He was in Santiago de Compostela, and uh, then from La Coruña, he crossed the ocean and uh, have a short uh, staying in England. And in the summer, in the early summer, he went to Flandria. During the summertime, he was, he spent the summer in, in Flandria. We are getting closer to October. We are almost there.
Yes. And uh, 500 years ago, 23rd of October, he was in Aachen. We can see the record of Aachen. He uh, arrived uh, from Wiltam uh, to Aachen on 22nd of October. And uh, he was crowned there. And uh, we have one documents from that day on 23rd of October. Uh, he wrote a letter to uh, the deputies of uh, uh, Catalonia uh, and they, he informed them that he was crowned on 23rd of October. And you can see the documents. This is the evidence of this. Here is the document from the Paris uh, uh, catalog. And you can see the date exactly 500 years ago. Uh, this document was dated. And the king, the emperor then, uh, described uh, the, his uh, coronation and uh, uh, informed the Catalonians about this, uh, this fact. So, uh, just a minute. This uh, service contains now nine rulers. Uh, we can say that it, it even uh, generally very ba balanced because it contains uh, five uh, men and uh, uh, four women. And uh, from these uh, rulers, it contains uh, 5,390 travels in 2,195 different locations in Europe and uh, North America, which uh, was uh, uh, in 23 uh, today's uh, uh, countries. So uh, because I mentioned that how important it was for us to uh, make an authentic service uh, leading back to the original records. It contains the works of seven uh, historians with uh, 9,000, more than 9,000 footnotes to uh, 111 European libraries and arch ar archives. Uh, and two, uh, 2,069 of them are online accessible. So, uh, uh, this is the service which, which uh, we developed and, uh, and we would like to develop it further. So if uh, we have further persons, descriptions, we would like to add uh, them to this service and we would like to add further functions to that. I have to say that this work uh, was a really minimum budget. The original, the first uh, service what we developed two years ago had a budget of uh, 2,000 euro, and the, the second was uh, this, uh, including the including Carlos and uh, his travels was uh, similar, and it wouldn't be happen without the enthusiastic volunteer support of the people who participated in, and uh, the support of the Spanish archives. So I I have to uh, say a big thanks to uh, Severiano the first and uh, also the director of the Simancas Archives, Julia, and the uh, tireless work of Joaquin, who uh, uh, ch checked this data and the, the travel places uh, uh, really uh, tireless way. So uh, thank you for all of them. And uh, yes, I have to say thank you to, to, to my staff in the National Archives of Hungary and to my management, who was really patient with, with, with uh, um, giving us the time to, to work with this uh, uh, really attractive, but uh, less, uh, how can I say, less uh, academic kind of work. I think with these kind of uh, services, we could attract more users, which are probably not so uh, familiar with the original Latin words, original kind of research in the archives. So I think it's a good chance for the archives to make their work more visible and, uh, and became 
uh, more relevant uh, to the society. And finally, because I think this is what I wanted to uh, show you, I shared the URL, the the uh, 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 the access point, and also my uh, email address. If you have any comments or probably uh, yes, uh, with this amount of these amount of data, it's always possible that there is some inaccuracy. So if if you find any mistakes or uh, things which is uh, which should be done uh, differently, please uh, write me. So thank you for your kind attention.